Hello guys and welcome back to the 21st part of the Kotlin Newbie to Pro series. In the last part I talked about classes, which is a very important topic of Kotlin. So we created a rectangle class, so a class that describes how a rectangle looks like and that class prints the side lengths A and B of that rectangle when we create it. We assign those two sides to that rectangle. And we also added three functions to that rectangle class. One that calculates the area of that rectangle, one that calculates the perimeter, and one that checks whether that rectangle is a square or not. Then we have done the same with a circle class. So we created the class like we did um, it for the rectangle class. So a circle takes a radius now, not the sides A and B and we defined the variable pi to calculate the area of the circle and the perimeter too. And your homework was to create a third class that is also a shape, which is a triangle class. I will show you that right away because we need that for this tutorial. So as you can see, a triangle takes three arguments in its constructor, A, B and C, because a triangle can have three different sides, not two. And in the init block, we just do the same as we did for the circle. We instantiated the triangle and then printed the three side lengths of that triangle and also printed its area and its perimeter. For that area, it's a pretty complex formula, but I showed you that formula in the last video. So you have to take the square root of that whole thing and the perimeter is calculated much easier. So now I want to go back to our tutorials.kt file where we created our rectangle instance and our two my circle instances. I want to remove all of that because I want to show you something new in this tutorial. So right now we created three classes that all describe different kind of shapes, but those three classes don't know that they are related in some way to each other. And because of that, we can create another class that describes a general shape and let those three classes we have created here inherit from that shape class. And by doing that, we can give all three classes default functionality that a general shape has and functionality that is specific to them. And you can also think of it just as it is in nature. So you in inherited a lot from your parents, but you're still not the same person as your parents. Instead, you're just an unique individual. And the same way you can think of that shape class. So every rectangle is a shape, but every rectangle is also a very unique shape. And because of that, we can define that shape class that defines general shape functionality. So we can, for example, give that shape a name and we know that every shape has, has a name, for example, rectangle, circle, triangle. But when we create that rectangle class with the sides A and B, then we can say that not every shape has those properties that a rectangle has. So the shape class is just a more general class that helps us to implement general functionality for all those shapes and we don't have to implement that functionality in each class by our own. So we only have to implement it once in the shape class and we call that class a super class. So a class where other classes inherit from. All right, so let's go to our SRC folder, right click, new, Kotlin file or class and call that class shape and make sure to select class here. Press enter. And there's our shape class. Okay, now we want to create the constructor for that shape class. So we want to specify which values we need to define a shape when we create it. And I want to just add here a variable for the name of a shape. So var name, which is a string. And in the init block, I want to print a line that just says I am the super class. And as I told you, the super class is just, in this case, the shape class, because 
the triangle, circle, and rectangle will inherit from that class. Also, I want to provide a function here that is um, used to change the name of that shape. So I'll write fun change name. And we have to enter the new name here, which is a string. And inside of that function, we just write name is equal to new name. And that is exactly the reason why I made that name a var here and not a val, because we want to reassign it here. But currently Kotlin doesn't know that this shape class here is the superclass of our three shapes here. To do that, to actually tell Kotlin that this is the superclass, we need to go inside of our classes and click after the constructor here, so after the first parentheses, and write a colon after that, and then we specify the class that this class inherits from. So in this case, it's our shape class. And make sure, make sure to um, call the constructor here because every time we create a shape, a shape, then it needs a name to be created. And we also have to um, provide that name inside of that constructor here. So I'll call that just triangle. And as you can see, the shape name here is underlined in red. If we hold on to it, it says this type is final, so it cannot be inherited from. And in Kotlin, it is only possible to inherit from a class if we actually define that this class can be inherited from. So we need to go back to our shape class here and go right before our class name here, our class keyword, I mean. And we have to make that class an open class. So that means that this class can be inherited from. And if we go back to our triangle, then you see the error is gone. And now the cool thing about inheritance in Kotlin is that if you take a look at the shape class, we defined the variable name here. And since our triangle now inherits from that shape class, that means that we can also access that name string from inside of our triangle class. So we can go to our print line statements here and write dollar sign name. And as you can see, it recognizes that we have a name property here, even though that property isn't defined inside of our triangle class. And we can do the same for those other lines. So the name will just be set here to triangle because we called the shape and pass for the name parameter here, the string triangle. So let's do the same for our other two shapes, circle and rectangle. Go to circle and write that colon after that constructor again and write shape. And this time the name is circle. Make sure to replace those circles here with name again. I'll just copy it here. All right, and that's basically it for the circle class. Let's go to the rectangle class and go after the closing parentheses too. Write colon shape rectangle this time. And replace this with name again. So now we told every of our three shape classes that it should inherit from shape. Now we can actually go back to our tutorials.kt file here and we can start to create some shapes. So let's create, for example, a circle here. Well, my circle one again and set that to a circle. And that circle needs a radius, as you know it from the last video. And that circle has the name circle, of course, because we set that name in the constructor of the shape class. But we also provided inside of our shape class the function that we can change the name of any shape. So let's do that. To do that, we write my circle one dot change name to, for example, Peter. And as you can see, we don't have that change name function inside of our circle class. We only have function area and function parameter there. But because we have that change name function inside of our shape class, 
we can still use that on our circle because it inherits from shape. So it will also inherit all the functions and all the variables that are defined in the shape class. So if we print a line after that with mycircle.name and run the program, as you can see, the first thing that happens is it prints I am the superclass because inside of our circle class we call the constructor of shape and if we take a look in the shape class after the constructor here is called it will execute that init block and inside of that init block it will execute that print line statement. So the first thing that happens here is that the constructor of our superclass shape is called after that, you can see that it prints circle created with radius 5, circle area is, circle perimeter is, and so on. Those three lines are printed inside of the circle class. So first the constructor of the shape class is called, then the constructor of the circle class is called, and then we call the change name function on our circle and change the name to Peter and print the new name afterwards and you can see it prints Peter here. And of course this also works for our triangle and rectangle so I can create a, an object here in my triangle, set that to a triangle, set the sides to 2, 3 and 5 for example. And as you can see my triangle now also has the function change name because it also inherits from our shape class. So we can change the name to Susan for example and print it afterwards. My triangle dot name and we can do it like the name of the triangle is and we can do the same above here of the circle of course and replace that with my circle one and if we run that program you see you know you already know that but afterwards it prints I'm the superclass again because inside of our triangle class it calls the constructor of the shape class and inside of that constructor in the init block we print the line I am the superclass after the, afterwards, it just prints the lines as we know them here. Well, actually, the triangle area is zero here because that triangle that I created here probably doesn't exist. You cannot create a triangle with those three side lengths if we just make them have the same value, for example, then we know that this triangle can exist. If we run the program like this, then you see that we get an area 2 here. So that has nothing to do with our formula here. Instead it is just um, because of the fact that the triangle didn't exist that I created before. So yeah that's basically it for this video. Your homework is to just try around with classes and inheritance a little bit. For example you could create a class person and then two classes female and male that inherit from that person class and then you could think of some properties that every person has and properties that only females and males have or maybe you could also create a class car and then let some car models inherit from that for example you could create Toyota, Lamborghini, Bentley and so on and you could even also um, create another uh, classes that inherit from a specific car model for example from Lamborghini so you could make classes that actually describe a specific model of that Lamborghini so for example um, Lamborghini Huracan or something like that and you, you can um, let as many classes as you want inherit from each other. I hope you liked this video and I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below what you think about this. Also, if you have any questions, don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.